Hey everyone, Mike Burke here with InsideRealEstatePhotography.com and just this week Adobe released its new version of Lightroom version 11 and in it are some new masking features and I wanted to go over some of these with you and show you how they might be beneficial to us as real estate photographers. All right, so this is gonna be a fairly quick video. As I mentioned, there's some new masking features in the new version of Lightroom, and some of them might be helpful to us as real estate photographers, and I just wanted to show you guys that because I thought it was worth mentioning. All right, so without further ado, let's jump into Lightroom, and I'll show you how these work. All right, guys, so here we are in Lightroom, and if we go over to this little icon, that's where all the new masking features are. So you have this menu here with new masks here. You have, what's new here is select subject, that's new, select sky, that's new brush that's been there before, linear, radial gradient, that's all been there before, color range is new, and luminance range is new. So some of these are employing AI like in Photoshop with the sky replacement tool that they added last year. So really cool stuff and really can be helpful to us. So, all right, so I have this exterior image of a house I shot here. So one of the masking features that will be beneficial to us here, of course, is select sky. So we can manipulate the sky, which is cool. It'll select out the sky if you wanted to make any tweaks to it. By the way, this is a sky replacement from my sky replacement pack. If you're interested in downloading that, the link is down in the description. I just released that recently. So definitely check that out. So I'm gonna click on select sky here. And you see the red here where it's masking out the sky it does a pretty great job of it. The AI is, is good. There is some, you know, overlap here a little bit onto the house, but you know, you might have to clean it up a little bit, but for the most part, it does a great job with it. So I'm just gonna zoom in here and try to get rid of some of this. So if you go over to the mask panel here and select the mask that we're working on here and you go to subtract, I like to use the brush to subtract. You can use these other tools as well, but the brush is really the best, I think. So if you go to the end of the brush panel here, you just wanna make sure your flow is all the way up. Make sure auto mask is off. So I'm just gonna zoom in here and just subtract some of this overflow here that we don't want. So really simply, I'll just click there and then I'm gonna shift click here and you see it just erased all that area. Shift clicking just makes it go in a straight line. So again, I'll sh click there, shift click here. That's all gone here on the gutter too. So all pretty easy to get rid of on the roof here. Looks like it got all over the roof here a little bit. A lot of images it does perfectly, sometimes not. Sometimes there's overflow like this, but you know, oops. So now we have our sky selected out, right? Just like that, pretty much I click a button and had to clean it up a little bit. Now, what you can do, you know, you can manipulate the sky here. Just go down to your, your controls here and you know, you can adjust the exposure, you know, the saturation, dehaze it a little bit. You know, you could add some clarity to it if you wanted to, you know, just really bring out some of the details of the sky, make it pop a little bit more. So it's a handy tool to be able to select the sky quickly and make any tweaks you wanna make. So it's, it's a handy little feature now in Lightroom. So that's great. I wish you could do sky replacements in here. That'd be awesome. But you know, it's not really for that. You still have to go over to Photoshop to do that kind of thing. But so that's that tool in a nutshell. It's pretty self-explanatory, straightforward. So the other tool here in uh, the masks panel, if you go to create new masks, you could do select subject. Not really a lot of times would you do this, but it's it, this is an option. So I just wanted to show you this. It will it will know the house. So see, I, I, it just pretty much selected the house pretty darn well. It knew that's what the subject of the photo was. It can tell what the dominant subject is. So it does a good job of picking that out. And again, we have some overflow here. So I'll just quickly grab my brush here. Kind of just get rid of some of this. I'm not gonna do like a super, great job of this here, but I'm just trying to demonstrate how this works. You know, you obviously would want to be a little more careful and I'm being right now, but, but you get the idea. So say you want to select the house, that's a way to do it. And then you could, again, you know, maybe you want to bring the house out a little bit more. Like you can control now, like the whole house, you know, and tweak that any way you might want to tweak it exposure, clarity, you could add some clarity to it, like bring out the house a little bit more, make it make it stand out a little bit more from the other houses around it or whatever. There's there's some options here that could be useful for selecting your subject by using the select subject mask. So again, another handy little masking tool now in Lightroom. Let's pop over to an interior image here that I shot. This is actually the same house inside the, uh, one of the bathrooms. 
So probably one of my favorite new tools in the masking panel here now is this color range option. So we go to the mask panel again here and we go to color range. So color range is a tool in Photoshop as well that I use for this same purpose that I'm about to show you, but it's great that it's now here in Lightroom. It just makes your workflow more versatile. So, you know, great. So let me just show you how this works. If you select color range, it'll give you this eyedropper. So what I like to do use this for is see how we got a lot of orange in this, in this photo for straightening out your whites and color correcting your whites to make them white. You know, again, you could mess these things out in Photoshop and do it that way. That's a long process. This is a much quicker way of doing it. So I'm just gonna click on one of these orange areas here, like on the bathtub. And you could see, you know, the red is kind of where it's picking up orange and the rest of the image. This refine slider here will, you know, change how much you know, you're selecting, it'll adjust the mask and you could use the brush too to subtract some of these areas. So, you know, that's awesome as well. So that again, just makes it versatile and you don't have to affect areas you don't want to affect. So this is, you know, a very effective tool for us as real estate photographers to, you know, correct these orange color casts that we have in our images. So I'm going to go with 50 here. I think that'll do well. So I'm just going to come down here to the temperature slider and bring the temp down to get rid of some of this orange. And wow, that cleaned it up real fast, real easily. So look, all the whites are really nice and white now. This image looks so much better. Look at the before and now the after, how much cleaner it looks. Really fantastic. You clean up the whites real simply, real easily. All right, so another thing you do that's great too, is say you wanted to brighten up the ceiling and nothing else, you can come over here and duplicate this mask. And now we can go to subtract and I'm gonna use the brush again. Now if you hit the O key, that'll show you the mask, the red mask areas, the areas that it's affecting. So if I just blow my brush up a lot and I'm just gonna kinda of go over this whole image because I just want the ceiling now. Just get rid of the rest of the mask here. This is again a duplicated mask. So the original mask is still there. So all the other areas are fine. I just wanna, you know, brighten up the ceiling a little bit more maybe. So now I got rid of that. So now if I come down to exposure, you know, I could, I could really brighten up the ceiling a little bit more. It also, it, it's, you can see the temp is still down from, so it's cause it duplicated it. We actually don't, we don't need to affect, we don't need to bring it cooler because we already did that, but I just wanted to brighten it a little bit. So we can just reset the temp back to, to normal. But yeah, see now I'm brightening up the ceiling independently from the rest of the image. So again, really versatile. You can really dial in and get certain areas of your image just right the way you want them without having to go to Photoshop to do this now, which is, you know, fantastic. It just makes things a lot easier and more versatile. All right, guys, again, I said this was gonna be a quick video. I just wanted to show you these features because I think they could really be helpful to real estate photographers out there. So if you did like this video, you did find it helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I really appreciate your support and I'll see you again on the next video.